If you need help deciding between iMovie or Final Cut Pro 10, you're in the right place. I'm gonna run through all the pros and cons of both pieces of software and help you choose what is best for you. Hey there, welcome to the video. I'm Mark Brown with Editor's Keys. Now, if you're new to video editing or even if you're a seasoned pro, consider subscribing to the channel because that's what we're all about. Now, in this video, we're gonna run through iMovie and Final Cut Pro 10 and go through the pros and cons to help you decide which you should choose to edit your videos. So, let's jump into it. So let's start with iMovie. Now iMovie is completely free and you know what, it's really hard to argue with free software. So if you've recently bought a MacBook Pro or an iMac, you'll find that iMovie will actually already be installed on your computer. And if you have an iPad or an iPhone, go to the App Store as you can download this app completely free of charge. So it's already a great place to start. Now iMovie is actually quite powerful. If you're just looking to produce some fairly basic videos for YouTube, then iMovie, I think in a lot of cases, will do 99% of what you need. It's very easy to use and it's very, very fast. So if you wanna upload videos to YouTube, it's the best place to start. But let's debunk some of the myths about iMovie. Okay, so Mark, I want to edit 4K video for my iPhone and iMovie just cannot do that. This is myth number one. I see this all over online and we get emailed about this a lot. There's this common myth that iMovie cannot edit or export in 4K and this is not true. You can edit 4K video even from your iPhone and you can export 4K straight up to YouTube. Now, there is a, a little catch to this. How you do it, you have to make sure that the first clip that you import into your iPhone iMovie project is a 4K piece of footage. If you import a low quality photo or a low quality HD bit of video footage, then your timeline and your project will just be HD and you'll only see the option to export in full HD. So remember, if you import the first clip as a 4K clip, then your timeline will be 4K and then you can edit your video and export it in all the glorious 4K crispiness. So whilst we're talking about video quality and export settings, let's talk a little bit more about one of the limitations of iMovie, and that is aspect ratios. Now, an aspect ratio is, in simple terms, the 16 by 9 cinema format or the square format that you see on the Instagram feed or Instagram stories, which is the portrait mode. Now, if you want to create and edit a video for YouTube or LinkedIn or Facebook, and you just need that 16 by nine, just the kind of regular TV size that you'll see, the movie size, then iMovie is completely fine. However, if you want to start uploading square videos to say your Instagram feed, or you wanna do those cool uh, Instagram story portrait videos and edit those together, you cannot really do this in iMovie, as there's no way to actually change the aspect ratio of your project. So this is something to bear in mind if you're thinking about iMovie, and of course you can do this in Final Cut Pro 10. Now the second myth I see a lot of people talking about is color correction and stabilization. They say, you know, I wanna edit in iMovie, but I just wish I could do basic color correction to improve the look of the video, or I want to stabilize my shaky video footage, and you can't do that in iMovie. Again, this is not true, you certainly can. And this is great for a free piece of software. You can actually adjust your brightness, contrast, and some of the basic color correction tools that you'll see in Final Cut are actually here in some ways in iMovie. Next, if you've got that shaky wedding footage or you've taken a little shot on your phone and it's not that stable, you can still stabilize in iMovie. So if you want to edit footage together, color correct it a little bit, and use stabilization, you can do all of this in iMovie. So you're probably thinking, hey, iMovie sounds pretty good. There doesn't seem to be really any limitations as of yet. Well, there are a couple that are worth noting, and the first big one is its limit in video tracks. Now, a video track is the amount of videos that you can layer on top of each other, and in some cases, you may need to do this to add video effects, or if you want to, say, create a shot where there's four or five different video pieces on the same shot to make up, say, a fake Skype call, for example, you can't really do that within iMovie. So if you're looking to do projects for businesses, this becomes apparent, this problem becomes apparent very, very fast. So that's something which is very limited within iMovie. Secondly is keyframing. Now, if you haven't heard of keyframing before, it essentially gives you the ability to 
add adjustments to clips as your clips are playing. So let's say, for example, you want to mask a clip out and you want a, a shot to come in and, and kind of take over from another shot, then you can't do this in programs like iMovie. They're just far too limited. You can cut one clip to the next, but you can't mask, you can't add a keyframe, and you can't really add keyframes to audio either. So let's say you want to make the music go up and down and higher and lower. You can't really do this within iMovie. Next, let's talk effects and titles. So iMovie actually has quite a lot of titles and some really nice effects, but they are quite limited and you cannot import new ones. So if you're putting out a couple of bits of content a month, I think iMovie will be just about fine. You can, of course, edit the titles. Uh, you can have some very basic titles. So it's fine for business. It's fine for probably like 80% of YouTubers. But if you get bored of these, there's no way of importing more effects or titles into the program as you can with Final Cut Pro 10. The other thing is when you start producing content in any great volume, you'll start to see effects in TV commercials or you may just see another YouTuber you like who has some kind of transition or light effect and you'll think that would look so good for my videos. If you're using iMovie, there's a great chance you're not gonna be able to do that within the program and you won't be able to go out and buy that plugin and import it into iMovie either. So if you wanna do stuff like that, then Final Cut Pro 10 is the program for you. So they are some of the most common pros and cons of iMovie. But what I do like about iMovie is that it's so simple to use. I think it can be actually one of the best video editors for a lot of creators out there, especially if you're just getting started. And the great thing about both of these programs being made by Apple is they're quite similar. So if you start off with iMovie and you outgrow it, you learn it, you, you think, okay, maybe I need some more effects and filters in there. I think it's easier to move from iMovie to Final Cut than it is from Final Cut back down to iMovie. So, you know, start off with iMovie, it's completely free, learn the ropes, you know, get used to video editing, and then you can invest in Final Cut. But let me tell you some of the pros and cons of Final Cut Pro 10. So one of the first things you notice when you open up Final Cut Pro 10 is that there are a lot of menus, there are a lot of tabs, and it can be quite confusing for some people. So this is why I recommend you starting out in iMovie. It's a much easier place to start if you're new to the video editing process. But what you can do within Final Cut, which you can't do in iMovie, which we mentioned before, is you can create projects in different sizes, in different aspect ratios, and with different frame rates. Now, a frame rate is important to understand if you want to do slow motion footage. So for example, a lot of projects uh, in the UK are filmed at 25p, in America, 24p. Now, if you bring in some 60p, 60 frames per second, or 120 frames per second footage into a 24 or 25 frames per second timeline, you can use that footage and create some beautiful slow-mo footage. You can do this in iMovie, but it's a little bit harder when you don't have full control over your project settings. Pro number two is that you can have multiple video channels and audio channels too. So you can really do whatever you like to your videos. You can add multiple effects, you can add multiple instances of the same video, and you can even do multi-cam editing. So if you're thinking of doing a, a podcast with say three or four guests and you film it all, you can edit it much faster than you can by taking each separate clip and pulling it into iMovie. So definitely one for you podcasters. Next up is color correction and effects. So if you have a good camera which can film in RAW or HLG if you're on a Sony or S-Log, something like that, it gives you more dynamic range. Now when you use a program like Final Cut Pro 10 or even Adobe Premiere, you get to dive into that data and you can actually really improve the color correction and the looks of your footage. And this means if a shot is overexposed or underexposed, you can pull up those shadows or highlights and really get the look you're looking for without damaging uh, the original video file, which is really, really cool. You've also got a whole host of transitions, of video effects, of sound effects, audio effects, and Apple also include a load of sound effects within the program too. Now, what I like about Final Cut is you can import more effects. So if you go through all of the Final Cut ones that are inbuilt and you find they're a bit limiting or they don't do quite what you need, there's websites like Motion VFX where you can search their website and you can actually download effects that plug straight into Final Cut Pro 10 and then you can achieve some of the sort of high-end effects that you may see on your favorite TV programs or movies. If you want a link to Motion VFX, I'll put one 
down below and that should also give you a bit of a discount on any plugins if you want to check those out. Next is audio editing. Final Cut has a whole host of effects to improve your audio effects. So if you're recording outside and there's traffic noise, you can get rid of that quite easily. Uh, if you're recording a piece to camera like I am now, there's multiple effects for improving your vocals and your voice to get everything right. Now, of course, this comes with a huge learning curve. So again, if you're new to video editing, maybe think about starting with iMovie because even though Final can do a lot, it can do almost an unlimited amount of effects and, and beautiful, wonderful things for your video. You know, this is quite a complicated job. Don't think that you're gonna pick up Final Cut Pro 10 and just because the software can do a lot that you're gonna be able to do all of these amazing things instantly. There is a huge learning curve when it comes to Final Cut Pro 10. People go to university to learn how to video edit. They do this as a full-time job and it's actually quite a highly paid job in the TV and film industry. So again, don't think you're gonna pick up Final Cut Pro 10 because it has all of these effects and features and you're gonna be able to do it all just off the cuff it's gonna be a lot of lessons and tutorials. And remember, check out the other Final Cut tutorials on our channel if you wanna learn more about Final Cut Pro 10. But just bear in mind that there is a steep learning curve to the program, as opposed to iMovie, which is actually very, very easy to use. Now, if you are learning Final Cut Pro 10 or iMovie for the first time, one great thing is that you can get the Editor's Keys keyboard covers for iMovie and Final Cut Pro 10, and these contain all of the keyboard shortcuts to help you edit faster than you can by just using your mouse or going through menus to find the tools that you need. So if you want to link to the Editor's Keys site for these covers, I'll put that link in the description below for you. But anyway, I hope this video has helped you understand a little bit more about iMovie and Final Cut Pro 10. You know, leave me a comment below if you've got any questions at all. I know a lot of you are new to video editing and there may be something that you think is very, very simple um, and you just can't find the answer to it. So if you've got a question for me, please leave me a comment below. I promise I do get back to every single comment. I may take a few days to do that, but I will get back to you eventually. So thanks for watching and please do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.